like to call the meeting to order the Local Agency Formation Commission. I don't know. I don't think my commissioners are ready. Um, this is the Local Agency Formation Commission meeting on Wednesday, May 23rd, 5 p.m. in the board chambers. I would like to welcome Liz Morris, our new commissioner from Delano. Roll call, please. Commissioner Fowler. Present. Commissioner Scribner. Here. Commissioner Sanders. Here. Commissioner Rivera. Here. Commissioner Mello. Here. Commissioner McKibben. Here. Commissioner McGuire. Commissioner Couch. Here. Commissioner Morris. Here. Thank you. Commissioner McKibben, would you please lead us in the pledge? Thank you. Approval of the minutes of the April 25th meeting. Move approval. Second. Thank you. I have a motion by Commissioner Couch, a second by Commissioner Sanders. Cast your vote, please. Motion it's, approved, all ayes. Was that a commissioner by commissioner? I mean, a motion second. But, uh, am I right? Okay. I'm second guessing you. <laughs> okay. Number four, public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on this agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. Not seeing anybody. Number five, notice to public hearings. Not seeing any on our list. Number six, public project review. A, 1717 City of Shafter, annexation number 87. Madam Chair, I'm going to recuse myself on this item. Um, I believe that I may have received a campaign contribution within the last 12 months from the one of the property owners, and so I am going to recuse myself. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Knox? Chair, Commissioners? It helps when I turn on my mic. Uh, today we have the City of Shafter, Annexation uh, 1717. Uh, for City of Shafter, that's Annexation number 87. Before you is a consideration of proposed annexation of approximately 3.89 acres into the city of Shafter. The proposed area is generally located one fourth mile north of 7th Standard Road and adjacent to the west side of the Laredo Canal. If you look at the map up on the board, you'll see that uh, red and white stripe, which makes it a very odd piece, little piece that we're annexing. This is actually part of a annexation that happened several years ago that unfortunately got left out when it should have been left left in. So we're going back and, and bringing it back in to the city of Shafter today. That's why we're here. Uh, as far as the proposal goes, uh, they have signed the indemnification agreement. There is no increase in taxation. The city of Shafter has designated the northern portion of the property as VLR, very low density residential. The southern uh, Portion approximately one acre is the designation of C slash PO, which is commercial, professional office, and GC, general commercial. This, this application is consistent with the general plan, regional transportation plan, and specific plans. It is consistent with commission policies. This does uh, convert ag land. As I mentioned, the odd shape of, of this uh, piece makes it difficult to farm, and it's already going to be developed into another another project. Uh, being such small and such a odd shape, um, the loss of farmland is less than significant in this point. At this point, uh, it conforms to the assessor's parcels. There is no functional overlap. The city has a current municipal service review on file. 
they have a water adequate water supply. And actually, water usage should go down uh, when this is developed as uh, compared to ag agricultural use. As far as CEQA goes, this is handled under a notice exemption, which has been adopted by the city of Shafter. Uh, and affected and overlapping agencies and districts were notified and no comments were provided on this project. The process required by the cortese knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices and publications required by law. Annexation to the city of Shafter has 100% landowner consent. The district has requested that notice hearing and protest hearing be waived. It is my recommendation the commission consider the environmental document adopted by the applicant we have notice, hearing, and protest hearing and approve annexation number 1715. 1717, excuse me. Okay, thank you. Do we have any public comments on this item? Do we have any commissioners' comments on this item? I'll move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Couch, a second by Barbara, uh, Commissioner Fowler. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, next item seven, commission items. Commissioners, no commission items. General business, A, approval of claims list number 1805. Move approval. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Couch, a second by Commissioner Scribner. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. They would go to item B, update special district commissioner appointment. Mr. Knox. Yes, thank you. As you may have noticed, um, Commissioner Sanders is still with us. Um, last, at last meeting, I mentioned that I should be bringing you the results of the, the election. Unfortunately, we did not receive a quorum. Uh, so that means Commissioner Sanders, Sanders continues to sit until a quorum is reached. Uh, since there was not a quorum, the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act allows me to extend it up to another 60 days. We were very close to having a quorum, so I extended another 30 days. As of Monday, I got the last vote and I needed to have a quorum. So we're gonna have an election. I actually have to wait until the 30 days runs out because if any other districts wanna get, put their ballot in, they need to be heard. Um, so we're gonna wait till June 4th, uh, close the, the, the ballots, and then I will meet with, or staff will meet with um, the Kern County Special Districts Association and we'll count the votes. And we'll bring that back to you at the next meeting. Our bylaws allow when a seat hasn't been filled by, by a uh, election for the current uh, commissioner to continue sitting. So that's why Commissioner Sanders is still here and could possibly still be here next month. We'll, we'll find out soon. So, uh, so if there are any special districts that are out there watching this tonight, you can still get your ballot in uh, before June 4th. Okay, thank you. And the last item, executive officer miscellaneous items. Mr. Knox? Yes. Also last month, I informed the commission that I sent a letter of support for two bills uh, Cal AFCO is sponsoring in, in Sacramento. Uh, I forgot to put them on the, la on the agenda last month and I almost forgot to put them on the agenda this month. And I panicked as I was driving home going, oh God, I forgot to do that. Uh, but luckily we were still within the Brown Act so I got those out to you before um, the Brown Act became in. So you have those in, the pa in your packet. Uh, I want to point out a bill that uh, is part of that, that package. It's AB 2258, uh, a bill at Cal, uh, Cal AFCO is sponsoring that requests funding for dissolution and reorganization of districts. 
I've been waiting for this bill in hopes that we'll have an opportunity to receive funding to pay for the dissolution of Rosedale Rio Bravo Resource Conservation District. It has been inactive for uh, really decades at this point, but has never been taken off the books. But it would take our funding to do that, and if I can get state funding to do it, let's do it that way. Uh, and the state controller's office is calling and asking about the dissolution of inactive districts. So they are, they are pushing at the state level for us to, to get those off the books. Uh, as far as this bill goes, no one has a problem with the funding portion of it, which is about $2 million. But the California Special Districts Association has pushed back and has concerns that the bill has raised the protest threshold for actions initiated by LAFCO from 10% to 25%. CSDA is concerned that AB 2258 would set up a scenario where a community facing a LAFCO action funded by a grant under this program would have less of a voice than a community facing a LAFCO action funded by the LAFCO itself. It is my understanding that this isn't true. It'll be consistent among both, uh, but that was their argument. They additionally argue that raising the threshold to 25% can make it virtually impossible for local residents to maintain self-determination with regard to who governs them. Lastly, CSDA is concerned that the increase is being proposed with no evidence to suggest that it is necessary. Uh, I don't know whether a 25% threshold is necessary or not, but we do have some districts that are inactive and need to come off the books. Uh, it would be great to have some funding to pay for it. Uh, so I think the, the greater goal here is bigger than the, the, the little details, and I, I believe we should continue to, to support it um, and continue to work with CSDA um, uh, to try to resolve that, that issue. So I'm, I'm continuing to work on that. Uh, there are two other bills that are coming up that uh, may be of interest. One is a bill that adds a factor for LAFCO consideration for review of a proposal. The, the factor is information contained in a local hazard mitigation plan, information contained in a, contained in a safety element of a general plan, and any mass identify, identify land as a very high fire hazard zone pursuant to section 51178, or map that identify lands determined to be a state responsibility area pursuant to section 4102. What that means is they want us to look at fire protection and make sure that areas are, are covered when there is an annexation, uh, something we haven't done specifically in the past uh, with the kind of fires we have in California. I don't think that's necessarily a bad idea. Uh, it's just figuring out which areas we need to look at closely and which ones we don't, and finding out what the definition of that is, is probably the most important part of this bill. Uh, there's another bill that's coming up, SB 929. The bill requires all independent special districts to have a website by January 1st, 2020, unless certain exemption standards have been met. Uh, neither bill has a large impact on our ability to perform our duties here at LAFCO, uh, and I would just as soon stay neutral on these unless they're amended and we need to take further action. On a different topic, Recently, we were uh, referenced in a letter from the grand jury to the Lost Hills Utility District. In that letter, it questions uh, a conflict of interest because Mr. Schroeder represents both the district and, Cal and Kern Lafco uh, and made a couple statements in their report that need, need to be responded to. Uh, one of them is it indicates that there may be a conflict. Whenever uh, Lost Hills has come up, Mr. Schroeder has recused himself uh, and has not taken part in any action from the LAFCO side of things. In, in fact, as you know, whenever he has a conflict, he actually leaves the room when we have a commission meeting so he doesn't have an, a, a conflict. Another point is they say he may be writing report and recommendations on these. That is absolutely not true. I know because I write them all myself. So. What I'm going to do is put together, I have a letter put together that I'm going to be giving to the grand jury stating those facts and just leaving it at that. I'm not getting into any other details of their report that has nothing to do with LAFCO. So I wanted you to be aware that I'm sending that out and I will give a copy of that to you. 
it was part of the grand jury's investigation that we realized that Mr. Schroeder does not have a contract with us that we can find. I mentioned this to you at the last meeting. I currently have that at uh, our alternate um, attorney's office, having him take a look at it, just so we know that we're in compliance and have a, a solid contract in place. So Mr. Hughes, it's the first time I actually used him in the year and a half I've been here. Uh, still haven't met him, but we've talked a couple times. So uh, it's good to give him a little work every once in a while. Uh, one thing I wanted uh, to talk about a little bit, I don't want to take too much time, is to talk, discuss the workflow and that analysis we do at LAFCO. Um, on each uh, application we do, we look at a number of factors that some of them you don't even, even see. Um, and while we're doing that, Mr. Rice has been able to perform a closer analysis of applications for accuracy, relevance, and compliance with the law. By doing that, I've noticed that there has been a shift in the speed it takes to get these applications before the commission. Many, many applications are moving faster. We have worked with agencies like the assessor's office to shorten and streamline the process, creating forms that are easier to fill out and gotten away from using slow mail to, uh, to interact, be, to, to share information between agencies. Uh, and often Mr. Rice has the data to pinpoint issues before they get too far in the process. So we're able to catch things early. Uh, we're able to do that because we are able to use GIS as we made a presentation to you a couple of months ago uh, to, to pull from multiple uh, data sources and analyze information very quickly. The end result is that applications that come to us clean and complete are moving much quicker. quicker. Applications that are not complete or have inaccuracies are actually taking a little bit longer. We think that's a good thing because we're gonna get a more accurate application in the end. And that's gonna uh, give you a better chance to make good decisions and protect us uh, from any actions in the future if there are any controversies or someone who has an issue with, with a, a project. As part of this, we're also going back and working with agencies to clean up mistakes that were made in the past. Today's annexation of that strip next to the canal is a good example. You'll see more of these uh, in the coming months. We're working on several. To continue to do this work, we'll need to upgrade our software from the GIS we currently have. We've been fortunate to use the, the um, uh, software agreement Mr. Rice had when he, when he was in his own business, but now that he's working for us full time, it's, it's up to us to pay for that, that license. It's, it's pretty expensive, and we're actually looking at alternatives. Currently, the best alternative is, through the, is working through the county on their agreement. Uh, we're looking at City of Bakersfield, uh, KernCog, to see whether some of those have, an, have the ability to add us onto their contracts so we have a, a better deal than if we just went alone. Uh, so I will be bringing that to you. It's above my $2,500 threshold. Uh, so um, I'll bring that to you at the next at the next meeting. <coughs> the next meeting is Wednesday, June twenty seventh. This will be the largest agenda that I have seen so far. We'll at least have five, six, maybe even seven applications on the agenda. Uh, we are often in July, so it's also important that we push these through and get them done. Uh, there are several people who are waiting, including some uh, outside of boundary services where people have lost wells and things like that. They would like to get water here pretty soon, so we would like to get those on the agenda. Uh, and that's my report. Thank you. Yes. And the last item is adjournment. And no one wants to leave. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. <coughs> I didn't hear a second, but I don't think it matters. Couch.